All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this ASUS. Um, this is model W700G notebook PC. I think this actually has a special um, name to it. Um, this is an ASUS studio book. All right, so the drive, or at least one of them was having an issue. They're set up in RAID 1, I believe. So they're actually using both drives as a single drive. And because of that, the customer had a problem when one of the drive failed, um, when one of the drives failed. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna replace both drives with a single uh, two terabyte SSD instead of two one terabyte SSDs. And we're gonna actually put Windows um, directly on there. All right, so I'm removing all the screws using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Um, if you haven't seen all my other videos, um, Basically, you want to keep all the screws in order. I put them flat side down like that. In the pattern, I remove them, and that helps me get the screws back to where I got them from. All right, so you got four here, right? Then we got three in the middle here, and then we got four more down here. If we're missing any, then um, yeah, we'll go from there. But anyways, they seem to be about the same size, shape, and length. The middle one is actually longer. Um, Though this was worked on by a data recovery place, so I don't know if anything changed. So keep that in mind. Um, the data recovery place did take the drives out to help them recover their data. Um, looks like the two down here are actually also longer, and these two appear to be shorter, assuming they didn't mix up the screws. Um, they might have actually mixed up some screws because this one was longer, this one's a little bit shorter, and then this one is much shorter. Or actually, what in the world? Okay, I don't know what's going on now. Um, let me see. I might have to rearrange this. I'm assuming by the design, these four should actually be shorter than the rest. So I hope the data recovery place didn't damage the computer. Okay, by design, I would assume these are the shortest. And then they got longer screws. I would assume that normally they would go back here because there's only two of them. Um, but again, I don't know. I'm just going based off of what I see. This is kind of why I don't like to work on computers that other people worked on before because you never know what's going on with that. All right, anyways, we're going to try and pop this up. Whoa, that popped up really easy. I hope they didn't break the clips. Um, okay, as you can see, it popped up easy from this side, but this side, no. So what I'm going to do, usually if I can, I will kind of get in between the gaps here and I will use my fingernails to kind of pop the clips up. All right, all right, seems like it's somewhat coming out. Maybe it will help to kind of, oh, it just popped out super easy. So the bottom case is actually, this is all metal. So I don't see any clips and it doesn't look like anything broke. So I guess that's just the design. All right, anyway, so we're gonna set this aside. As you can see, Drive Savers did uh, work on this and they put some numbers in there. We're gonna take out the two SSDs here. And we're actually going to take both of them out and hopefully we'll be okay with just installing one SSD and putting the Windows OS on there. So we're going to pull this drive out, comes out like that, PCH lanes, hmm, okay. So hopefully we'll remember, uh, at least for the video you can see, green one here, and then they have this CPU uh, Intel SSD up here, okay. I don't know why they did it that way, but there we go. So they actually label it, so... We're going to put the main SSD in the top one, and hopefully that will work okay. Um, this is more just a quick look inside because um, the customer just had a problem with the booting. So we're just going to put a new SSD in there, and hopefully that will get this thing working. All right, so we're going to get this two terabyte SSD in here. It goes in at an angle like that. You can see it flops up and down. And then we're just going to get the screw back in. We're going to put this down and tighten this screw into place. And hopefully they didn't somehow make it in BIOS that this only works with this dual SSD thing. That would be very dumb. Um, but anyways, uh, let's see if I can give you guys a closer look at what's inside. Um, you got this little board here. Is that the power button? Let me open this. I don't remember. Yeah, that's the power button. Okay, so you got the power button board there. I don't know where the cable's going to. Um, it looks like it might be here. Okay, CPU, GPU are soldered to the motherboard. You can't replace it. You got this cable running through here that goes from the screen and then it connects down here. Okay, you got the wireless card soldered to the motherboard. Um, you got this connector for the speaker, which runs there. And then the other speaker wire goes 
all the way there to connect to the other. All right, you got these, this white cable that's running along here, that's a wireless antenna. Then you got the other one right here, this is the other wireless antenna for the black wire. Fan connectors here, another fan connector hidden under this tape here. There's not really much to look at. These, this battery connector has a little sliding latch here. Oh, it's not supposed to pop all the way out like that. <laughs> that's weird, let me zoom in and get that back in place. Huh, how did that happen? All right, well, let's get this back in. I don't know if you guys can even see what I'm doing, but there's a little slot there that I have to get that back into. That was not supposed to come out, so I have to kind of push that inwards. I might have to do this. Oh wait, there we go, okay, and there we go. Yeah, so this is supposed to just slide back that much. Oops, sorry. That's supposed to just slide back that much. I had to push that um, thing in and then to angle it because it was going out like that. So I had to angle it that way and push it in. Uh, but anyways, once you slide this back, you can actually get underneath here and then pop the connector out. I'm going to leave that in place because I don't want to reset their BIOS and stuff. I don't see a separate BIOS battery. So most likely use the main battery as the CMOS BIOS real-time clock battery. All right, this is most likely keyboard backlight connector. And this is likely the trackpad connector and then the keyboard connector. All right, if you watch enough of my videos, you'll actually see it's a very common setup. Actually, this cable goes to these LEDs up here, it seems. So I'm not too sure where the trackpad connector is. But uh, again, I'm not going to pull everything up. Um, and then it looks like there's another cable here, which I don't see a label. So it could be that might be going to the trackpad or this might be going to the track. There's so many little connectors here. All right. Um, they're not labeled, but this is definitely keyboard connector, the big wide one. It's pretty rare that that wouldn't be. It could be this keyboard uses like multiple. Oh, I see. There's a fingerprint sensor over here. So likely this side is a fingerprint sensor. I'm getting a phone call. Anyways, um, let's zoom back out. That was just a quick look inside. We're going to put the cover back on and see if we can reinstall windows here. Okay. Um, again, I don't know why they set it up like this. Let me see. Is this... This is about the same height. That's about the same height. These are shorter. I would assume this is like a shorter, uh, the shorter screw should all go in the front. The center one, I can believe that it would be a longer one, but uh, it's really strange. I don't know, whoever worked on this, I see where three would definitely be. I would assume these three would definitely be longer. Uh, let me see what they included, one, two, Is this a longer screw or the same? Okay, I see two screws that are definitely longer. Actually, yeah, there's two screws that are definitely longer than all the rest. Um, so I'm assuming the longest screws would be back here and then the short screws would be here. And that's how I'm gonna put them back because I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be, not the way that drive savers put it back. So. That's the difference when I work on computers. I like to put the screws back exactly where they should be, um, but uh, it makes it difficult when somebody worked on it before. So if you can see back here, it's more flat. And normally I would think there's three longer screws, but because these are the only ones that are kind of more uh, sticking up, I'm assuming this is the longer ones. All right, and it does fit nicely there. Let's go ahead and get this screw in. There we go. Okay. And then you got the medium length screws. And I'm pretty sure, do we have four of those super short ones? Actually, there's only two of the super short ones. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to assume the two shortest ones are these bottom corners. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's get these screws all back in. And then we'll power this up and run our windows installer and hopefully that will fix the problem okay so we'll get all these screws back in all right you'll probably want to stick around to see if the windows install works uh, the other option is you can clone your hard drive to the other ssds first but again because they split it into two that makes the cloning process uh, more difficult i'm not sure how you can clone a um i'm not sure how you can clone a raid setup to be honest um, so yeah, if you have a question on that, I don't know. 
you'll probably have to look it up it makes it more complicated that's why it's better to use just a single drive or you can even do they I don't know why they don't do a raid zero to make it more secure so that your computer is more likely to survive I guess their main focus was performance but um, yeah all right let's go ahead and flip this thing over make sure everything is snapped together there shouldn't be any clips so I don't know why it clicked but uh there we go all right let's go ahead and plug in the Windows USB installer and see what we got usually with uh, Asus laptops you want to go into the BIOS it's usually F2 or delete sometimes it's escape I'm gonna press F2 or delete and okay we are getting the Asus logo on here if you're wondering Okay, so now we got this. Battery's only at 6%, so I do need to plug it in. I do see my SanDisk Cruiser Fit in here at the top. Okay, serial number, NVIDIA. It's showing the processor. Okay, I do see the NVMe showing up right here, so we should be okay. So let's go ahead and install this. What we're going to do, we're going to press F8 to go to the boot menu. We got the SanDisk Cruiser, which is my Windows USB installer. Press Enter. Go to Windows 10. 64-bit option not that it matters all right we'll let this boot up and we'll see if it shows the drive if it shows the drive we should be in good shape we should be able to just install the operating system uh, blah, 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 operating system to it um, and we got these SSDs here looks like we can fit them both in this casing so I'll give it back to the customer like that Windows installation is starting up Again, I do need to plug this thing in, okay, but it looks like it's going to work. So, let me plug this in, and, okay, there we go. So we got the options, I like to push tab three times to get to the next, press enter, enter to install now, wait for that. Plug this in. I don't know why, but Asus likes to put their charge port thingy in the center of the laptop instead of on the corners. We'll let this start up. Starting up. All right. Um, you don't have to put the product key, so I'm going to tab to I don't have product key and press enter. Usually it will go on its own, but if you don't know, you just want to check what version of Windows. It just says Windows here, so I'm assuming they had Windows 10 Home. We're going to press enter. Okay, and it should auto find the license afterwards. I'm gonna push the space bar to accept license, enter to next, down arrow, go to custom install. We do see the one or the two terabyte SSD there. We'll press enter and it'll automatically go. And that's pretty much it. Just follow the on-screen prompts and enter your username and everything. Um, usually when I first set up the computer, I don't like to connect it to the internet. And the reason being is I don't like to link a Microsoft account right away, so. Keep that in mind, if you don't wanna link a Microsoft account, don't connect it to the internet, just tell it you don't have internet, you don't have Wi-Fi, and then you can actually create a local user account. But that's pretty much it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike. All right, I know somebody's gonna ask or mention because I didn't take the RAM out. There are two slots here. If you wanna remove the RAM, you just pull these two tabs to the side. All right, um, you don't have to disconnect the battery or the power to do this, but you wanna be careful not to drop anything inside here. Um, this is DDR4 RAM, but they took all the labels off of it, so I don't know what the speed of the RAM is. Um, if you want to know the speed, you'll have to use some program to look it up on your computer, or possibly in the BIOS. Actually, let me do that real quick. I'm going to put the computer back together, and we'll take a look at the BIOS if I see the speed. Alright, so sadly it doesn't look like they show the speed of the RAM here, okay? So, yeah, if you need the speed of the RAM, you'll probably have to use software to look it up. All right, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.